morning, everyone. How you doing? You okay? I did think about the sermon this morning being done from the, uh, the Susical corner over here, um, but decided not to. Ah, oh, I know, maybe later when you get bored. Um, we are in our gift day, uh, the second gift day of the year that we hold. And as you've seen from the videos already, one is for the Ordinary Fund, so Mission and Ministry, that's the PCC, and one towards our buildings and resources and a project that we call Heart of Our Communities, which is the gift day today. And we're going to have a little look at that passage that Tamara just read to us from Romans 8 in picking out some key thoughts of what it means to be a a generous people, people who respond to the call of God and some key focuses for thinking about our generosity. I don't know about you, but often with fundraising things, and that church is part of that dynamic, I think, that we often think about what we're giving to. And that is important. It's good that we've seen the video so that you can see any gifts that you make today, what they'll be used for, where they'll go to. A focus is rightly sometimes, on the two. What are we giving to? But I want to say this morning, from a perspective of someone trying to follow Jesus, that actually I think the giving to is secondary to what am I giving from? What am I giving from? By which I mean that if you are just giving to without somehow your heart being touched out of a relationship with Jesus, that's the from, that giving will simply be a painful burden. But if you give from a sense of from, so you're met with Jesus, you're so in love with him, you want to follow him, you're obedient to him, we try to live for him, then in a sense, giving is just part of life. And we go, this is amazing, Lord, what you've called me to join in with. And we give joyfully and hilariously to the kingdom of God, to his work. It's not just about church, actually. There's something about our generosity that that provokes our discipleship. In fact, if you want to be a really close disciple of Jesus, I would say today, get your hand in your pocket Because when we start to give, we start to follow more closely. And it's not just money, of course. It's time and prayer and all of the things that we bring with us as people. The Romans 8 passage takes us to the central message of the from. What am I giving from? And Paul, who wrote this letter, we're reaching the pinnacle of this letter, Romans chapter 8. He says three things in this passage that I want to highlight in the next few minutes. He says that we're called as followers of Jesus to be led by the Spirit. Secondly, he says that we are adopted by the Father. And thirdly, he says we are heirs of Christ. And we'll come to those three things in the next three minutes. Um, We are led by the Spirit, adopted by the Father, and heirs of Christ. So firstly then, we are led by the Spirit. That's what Paul says. When you are led by the Spirit, those who are led by the Spirit are children of God. When we meet with Jesus, when we welcome him into our life, we become part of the family of God, and then we are led by the Spirit. I pray that today our generosity might come out of a place of being led by the Spirit. Please don't give just because somebody like me stands at the front and says, give. Give because you are led by the Spirit to give. What is God calling you to participate in? It's been said that the last part of us to get converted is our wallet. And I think it's true. It was true in my life. For years I went to church and didn't contribute anything other than my time, and that was okay. But that moment of saying, do you know what? I need to give, to join in with what God is doing here, was a moment of being led by the Spirit. Last year, 
on this gift day, which is for our buildings and our resources. I sat in the church building and I had a little conversation, stroke argument, with the Lord that went like this. Lord, I'm giving already. Yes, but Sai, what about giving more? Yeah, but Lord, you don't understand. I'm giving already. Yeah, but what about giving more? And I had this little conversation where I just knew that little nudge from the Holy Spirit that I needed to do more. And so I went into my app on my phone, banking app, changed the standing order, filled in a pledge form that we're going to be encouraging ourselves to do this morning, and changed what I was giving in order to follow the nudge of the Holy Spirit. This morning, I wonder what the Holy Spirit is nudging us to give. Maybe some of us for the first time giving. You will discover joy when you give out of that being led by the Spirit. Some of us will be increasing our standing orders for this project. Some of us will be giving monthly. Some of us will be giving a donation today. Let it be led by the Holy Spirit. Not because someone like me tells you it's good to give, but because you're sensitive to the Spirit of God who just gently nudges you with what to give. Many, many years ago, some of us stood on this empty bit of land right here. In fact, I was interviewed for the job of vicar, just standing over there on an empty bit of land. And uh, some years later, when we were thinking about doing what God called us to do to develop this center, there was a, a moment when we held, a, a, we had some time of sharing, talking about the plans. We gathered together, people contributed thoughts and ideas and prayers. And there was a moment where we came to a Sunday when we said, right, if we're going to do it, we need to know that we're in it together. And some of you were, were there. The church was a bit smaller then, but people were pledging to what they would give to the project over the next five years. Some one-off donations, some monthly pledges. What can you commit for the next five years? And on one Sunday, there was a pledge of nearly two million pounds spread over a five-year period. And the treasurer at the time, I made him go back and count again. Because he came and said, it's 1.92 million. I said, what? I said, go and count again. Make sure the decimal point is in the right place. People pledged. And many of you are part of that journey. And still are. And many of us have carried on just contributing monthly to the overall purposes of what God is doing here through this place. Led by the Spirit. It was one of those moments when we knew we could press the go button on developing the work that God had called us to. To build this, to refurbish the church, to renew the old school rooms and to give 10% of everything that we raised away. £400,000 pretty much given away. I think God has called us to that, led by the Spirit. Secondly, in this passage, you'll have spotted it already, it says that we wouldn't live in fear. We would be able to call God our Father and that we would know that we were adopted by the Father. That's the second thing in this passage. The Spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship and by him we cry, Abba, Father. That's the second from First from is we're led by the Spirit. Secondly, we are adopted by the Father. When anybody ever gives their life to Christ, they know that they are adopted by their Father in heaven, welcomed into the family of God that is global, is cosmic, outside of time. We are adopted into that family. Some of you have had the joy of adopting Children, which is an amazing blessing. Some of you have had the joy of being adopted. When I've talked to folks who've been adopted, there's seems to be one consistent message. You know, most of us, when we have kids, we just, our kids are kind of delivered, aren't they? Like an Amazon package. <laughs> where you don't know what you're going to get. And you receive your kids with joy, and they grow up, and, but you've got no choice in that, really, other than the initial choice to 
make them, um, to partner with God in making them, um, that your kids arrive, and they, they are your kids, and we, we love them. M- m- many of your kids I know, and they're lovely, m- most of them, so <laughs> that's, that's fantastic. And, you know, my own children are also lovely uh, occasionally. And, um, it's, it, you know, it's the joy of being a parent. But when you talk to somebody who's been adopted, they will often say this, I was chosen. I was chosen by my parents. They chose me. Some of you who've been adopted need to hear that this morning. You were chosen, not accidental. For those of you who are ado- have adopted children, you have joined in with that God heart thing of adopting somebody. You were chosen before the beginning of time to be a, a son or a daughter of the living God. Adopted by the Father. Not an accident, not some quirk of nature or a moment when you stood in an evangelistic service somewhere or church. Adopted by the Father because he wants you. And he loves you. We give from that place. I've been adopted. Of course I'm going to give because I've been adopted, I've been chosen. Here's this thing that Corrie ten Boom said. Famous uh, missionary, a, a survivor from a concentration camp in the Second World War. She said this, the measure of a life after all is not its duration, but its donation. Not how long we live, but what do we contribute to what God is calling us to in our lives? Not its duration, but its donation. We give from being led by the Spirit. We give from being adopted by the Father. And thirdly and lastly, we give from knowing that we are co-heirs with Christ. We are heirs with Christ. That means that everything that is Jesus's is yours. The forgiveness that flows through Jesus is yours. The eternal life that is his, is yours. You are an heir with Christ. And so, of course, we will want to be generous and and to give of ourselves in all those ways because everything belongs to Jesus anyway. That little prayer that we had in our prayers taken from uh, the, the story of Solomon All things come from you, Solomon prayed, and of your own I will give you. Everything comes from you. And so, of course, we're going to want to give. I love this quote by Augustine. He said this, God is always trying to give us good things, but our hands are often too full to receive them. You see, when we hold on to everything, like it's, a, you know, it's the beginning and end of the stuff that we've got, the lives that we have, even the finances that are ours, when we just hold on to them, we leave no space for opening our hands to receive what God might have for us. That moment in the church last year when I sat there and I looked at my finances and I, and I felt the Lord say, just give a, a little bit more, and I was able to change that monthly donation was a moment of just releasing a little bit, giving back to to Jesus what is his anyway. And then I create a bit more space to receive blessings and glory and and love and generosity and all those things that we're able to then pass on. Have you discovered the joy of giving, the blessing of generosity? Generosity of saying thank you for all that he's given to you and then giving back what was his in the first place. In a few minutes' time, we're going to have an opportunity to give. The kids are going to come back and join us. You should have two bits in front of you. You may well have one of these gift day leaflets. If you don't have one, there are some available on the, on the desk over there. But you should also have a little heart. And in a moment when we, when we pledge... Together, We are going to pledge in a couple of ways. 
If you've given already online, maybe you've made your donation clear already, I'm going to suggest that with the heart that you've been given, you simply come forward and place your heart in the offering bowl, which is a symbol of you saying, I'm praying. It may also be a symbol of you saying, I've given already or I've pledged already. If your heart response is the key thing this morning, then bless you as you do that. It may be that this morning you want to give a little pledge donation. You've seen the QR code. They're available all around the building. You you can scan a QR code. It will take you to the page to give. Or, Or you might want to fill in one of these gift day leaflets. Again, they're available on the giving station. Um, And there are some pens and stuff there as well. As we draw to a close in a few minutes' time, you might want to go and get one of those, fill it in. just want to say one thing, and this is from my own experience. Just because you pledge doesn't mean anything's changed. In other words, um, you may get an email from the church saying, thank you so much for your pledge, uh, with a little polite, gentle reminder that you will have to do your bit to change your banking stuff. So you need to go to your app, Um, you know, you need to sort out the standing order yourself. We can't do that for you. So if you give already, if you want to increase, do that via your banking app or online or wherever you do that. If you're giving for the first time, this is a great place to start. And we will send you a reminder um, to let you know what to do once you've pledged. Many people have been part of this journey. Some who are still here, some who have gone to be a blessing in other parts of the country and the world. We have an opportunity to to give today. Express that we're led by the Spirit, adopted by the Father, and heirs with Christ. And now we're going to open the floodgates, and children are going to join in. And of course, they will say to you, won't they, Mum and Dad, what are you giving today? It's called the pressure of having children. They are yours, so welcome back. Guys, come on in. And the kids this morning have been doing a, doing a, a little bit of thinking about generosity and hearing some stories about that and counting themselves in. So isn't that a great thing? They've been thinking about that. I worked with a colleague who's was, uh, lives in a council flat in, in the centre of London where we were working. And um, her, her kids used to give 10% of their pocket money. Their pocket money was a pound a week. And they would give 10p from that into the life of the church every single week. It was costly for them. And we're called to follow that journey. So why don't we stand where we are, if you're able to. Kids, welcome back. We've been talking a little bit about generosity and giving and all of, all of that stuff. So let's have a moment to pray. Now we as the kids join us, let's pray. Lord, we thank you that we are people that can say that we are led by the Holy Spirit, that we're adopted by God, who is our Father, and that we are heirs with Christ. That means everything that belongs to Jesus is ours. And so, Lord, we bring you ourselves this morning. We pray as we pledge right now that, Lord, we might meet you in this moment. It would be an act of worship to know that we're led by you into all that we are a part of here in church. We pray that these gifts might be a real blessing in our communities, here in church and beyond. And we pray that we might experience something of your amazing love again as we give. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. 
So we're going to carry on worshipping together as David and the team lead us. And as we do that, there's an opportunity to give. You can do that at any point afterwards, of course. And the, the giving station will be there over coffee, so you can have a little chat with someone. There's one here. There's also one at the back, if that's easier. But as we worship, why don't we give now? You'll see the QR code on the screen. We'll leave that there for a, a little moment. You can scan that. It takes you straight to the website. Let's make this an act of worship as we pledge.